New applications of AI tech has been super crazy these past few days, so let's dive in. First up, we have Meta's new audio box. So Meta recently released a free demo version of their new audio box tool. This AI tool can clone your voice using only a few seconds of audio. It's impressive if you kept up with voice cloning because most models require a significant amount of audio data to process your voice, such as Eleven Labs, which recommends five minutes, and Descript, which says hours will help. But surprisingly, I've gotten some pretty good results from Meta's audio audio box with just a few seconds of recording. Now, I will note that the outputs at the moment are limited to only a few words at the time for their demo, but I'd be impressed to see how well this could be in the near future once implemented into their full ecosystem. Hi, Nate here. This was created using roughly five seconds of audio using Meta's audio box tool. I think this sounds pretty interesting. Next up, we have Pika Art. Pika Art makes really awesome AI video editing tools, and their earlier demo was insane because it showcased some awesome in painting, out painting, and animation features. Their earlier demo was really cool, but they've recently released their Pika text to video animate 1.0 rollout. Previously, Pika has been in very limited beta, and only recently have members started to get approved for their waitlist. In the meantime, though, you can go over to their Discord and check out some text to video generation as well as their animate features, which let you upload a photo and instantly animate it. I don't think Pika is anywhere near final production quality and reliability yet, but they are looking to be one of the most promising AI tools for post-production. I really hope Adobe is working hard and pumping out better AI tools for After Effects soon. Next up, we have Mixtral 8X7B Mixture of Experts, which just released. Now, Mistral subtly dropped their Mixtral 8X7B model, which is looking like a viable competitor to OpenAI's GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. Now, I gotta say, they had one of the sickest drops because while Google was pumping out a bunch of Gemini tech videos last Friday, Mistral, a low key French startup that's now valued at 2 billion, posted on X a torrent link to their model, and that was it. Now, this model is based on the MOE concept, which instead of having one giant LLM, surprisingly smaller specialized LLMs working together will provide better results. Now, the best thing about Mixtral 8X7B is that it's completely open source, unlike OpenAI's not so open GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. Now, already different developers and researchers are fine tuning Mixtral, so in the near future, we may have some really interesting open source advancements for AI that could really start to compete with OpenAI. Though, by that time, I'm sure GPT-5 would be out already. Now, if you're curious about how these LLMs work, there's a really great link that I'm gonna leave down in the description. This provides you a 3D visualization of how these actually work and what happens with the models like GPT-2, NanoGPT, and GPT-3. What's really cool about this website is that not only do you get to see the architecture set up behind it, but it even shows you what happens if you were to input in a specific prompt once it gets sent to the rest of the neural network and it goes throughout the different embedding layers, the layer norms, the self-attention layers, projection, MLP, transformers, softmax, and then down to the final output. So I highly recommend you guys go ahead, check out this website. It's pretty cool and probably one of the best visualizations out there right now for understanding how these things work which once you take a look, it really does look like magic. And it's kind of interesting to see that these were actually designed just based on the way that our brains work and how we think. So if you look at the Nano GPT model, it has about 85,000 parameters. But if you go all the way up to the GPT-3 model, instead, that's when you start to get to 174 billion parameters. Now, if you can imagine, this is still much, much smaller than that of GPT-3.5 and GPT-4. And to close this out, I want to give you guys a super helpful tip for prompting ChatGPT. This tip has helped me actually develop an entire app that you can actually download on the Android store right now for free. So if you guys can imagine, I had absolutely no coding experience prior to this, and all I used was ChatGPT to write the entire code for this app. So it created the swiper agent. It told me how exactly to structure it, even how to include Google AdMob implementation into it. This was a two week intensive project, but the biggest, biggest tip that I can tell you is that using multiple agents or some sort of scenario in which you create a planner, researcher, and executor and have those three communicate to each other will definitely give you better results. On top of that, this one tip is going to sound super, super silly, but specifically tell it step by step. Now, having that phrase seems to kick the LLM into some sort of computational mode for the process. And the benefit of this is that sometimes when you're giving it a task along the way, it already has shortened down whatever task it is that you've set. And this could cause problems down the line where you may find 
find out that the answers are not giving you a complete picture. Whereas when you tell it step by step, you'll start to notice that the chat will start to instantiate different steps for the process. And then using that reflection of those steps, it'll actually give you a much better result. So here's an example of this. Let's say you wanted to code an app rather than saying, hey, code me the snake game. Instead, you can tell it, think step by step how to code the snake game and then tell it to assign multiple roles to achieve this task. The primary role will be the planner. The secondary role will be the researcher who will utilize the internet. And the final will be the expert coder. By contextualizing your prompts and giving them assigned roles, you're ultimately achieving the same thing as the mixture of experts by having different experts weigh in and creates this feedback loop that actually allows the LLM to refine its process and allows it to actually give you much better answers. So I see all the time, plenty of people on Reddit saying, hey, ChatGPT is broken. And I wanna tell you firsthand experience, it's not actually broken, okay? It's just how you prompt it and how you deliver that messaging. And surprisingly, some of the tricks there are really silly. So to recap the biggest tips that I can give you, it's these three simple concepts that I guarantee will help you get better answers, better results every single time. The first one is to actually include the phrase step by step. The next one is to tell it to give you its best guess. And the last one is to tell it to assign multiple agents. Hope that helps you guys get to creating some awesome stuff in ChatGPT. If you want to check out the full app that was coded entirely by ChatGPT, you can go ahead and check that link in that description box. Note, this is the first version and we are going to be updating it to see just how far we can use ChatGPT in the terms of updating an app. So make sure you stay tuned so you don't miss out on that. Anyways, happy holidays. Hope to catch you in the next one. Peace.